Howdy, y'all. I'm Matt, former member of the Flutter team and chief of the Flutter Bounty Hunters. Today, I'd like to talk to you about using a modern technology to solve a very old problem, and that is using Dart to generate static websites. Let's talk about it. What is a static website? I define a static website as a website whose content is completely defined at the time that you build it. And what does this mean in practice? It means no user accounts, no user posts, no user uploaded videos, no user comments, no shopping carts, none of these things that alter the data, the information, the content of your website after you have deployed it. And that might sound very restrictive. You might say, why would we ever want to do that? Well, we gain some benefits. Here are some technical benefits. Typically, there are no databases, no container deployments, no security rules, no infrastructure attack vectors like people breaking into your WordPress deployment. And a static website is typically entirely based on a vanilla HTTP web server, which is a technology stack we've been using effectively since the mid-90s. There are also some publishing benefits. I say that it's like WordPress, but without the hassle. You get easy authoring, typically through something like Markdown, but you also don't get stuck in some framework for the layout. You have full and direct control over the layout and the theming of the website that you publish. And also, when using a static site generator, it's typically easy to set up automatic deployments with something as simple as adding a commit to your repository and pushing to your main branch. There are also a couple user benefits. Because this is a static website, there's not very much to download. Your website distribution size tends to be very tiny. And what you're distributing is basic HTML and CSS, which is what browsers have been optimized to render, which means that your website is rapidly rendered for the first frame. So why might you choose to use a static site? Simple tech, minimal maintenance, easy authoring, easy deployments, fast download, and rendering. Which begs the question, where might you use a static site? Blogs are very popular. Here you see blog.flutterbountyhunters.com, which is a static website created with a static website generator. Why blogs? Well, blogs are essentially a big bundle of articles, and all of those articles are available at build time. Similarly, but maybe a little bit different from a blog, is like an educational website or a guide website. Here you see flutterarbiter.com, where we publish articles about how to work effectively with Flutter and Dart. Here again, we essentially have a bundle of articles. All of those articles exist at build time. A static website's a great option. And then one that I think is really important to recognize are documentation websites. So here you see supereditor.dev. Supereditor.dev is where we document how to use our open source super editor package for building document editors, document readers, and custom text fields using Flutter. Here again, lots of guides, lots of articles. Now there's a bit more complexity here. There, those articles are bundled in different ways, but it's still all available at the moment you build the website and therefore it can be a static site, which is built with a static site generator. So what is a static site generator exactly? You can think of it as involving three pieces, inputs, outputs, and, and the way that you transform the inputs to the outputs. The inputs are something like Markdown, which is where you write your content in a convenient way. And then you have a template, which represents the layout without the content. Then you might have SAS, which is an easier way of writing CSS. And you might have assets like images and fonts. Well, what's the output? If it's a static site, you don't have many options for output. You're going to have HTML. You're going to have CSS. You might have a little JavaScript. You'll have images. You'll have fonts. That's all that it can be because that's all that browsers understand. All the interesting stuff happens in between. The part that transforms those inputs to the outputs. Your markdown is converted to HTML. The HTML for your markdown content is then injected into the HTML for your layout. You might also take incoming images like PNGs and compress them down for your final website build. 
And your static site generator during build time might actually go off to various APIs, pull data from APIs and inject that data into your final website. Those are the kinds of things, those transformations are what static site generators are really about. So let's take a look at just a few static site generators that already exist. The first is Jekyll. Jekyll is probably the longest lived, most well-known static site generator. It's written in Ruby, and it is the only static site generator that is natively understood by GitHub pages, meaning you literally don't have to configure anything, and GitHub pages knows how to build and deploy a Jekyll website. Now, Jekyll is aimed as much for non-programmers, authors, as it is for programmers. And what that means is that there's a pretty big divide between configuring a project and altering how Jekyll works. Most things are done through configuration. So you're kind of limited on that side. And then if you really want to learn deeply how Jekyll works, you can write some Ruby and alter what it does. Hugo, in my opinion, is kind of like the more modern version of Jekyll. Hugo is written in Go. It claims to be very fast, but it's also, again, highly convention and highly configuration oriented. It's made for non-programmers and programmers alike. That's great if you're not a programmer, but if you are a programmer, it's a bit more of a steep curve, in my opinion, to really get in there and start altering how Hugo works. Which brings me to what I think is the most interesting static site generator I've seen in a long time, which is Loom. Loom is written in JavaScript. It's built and deployed with Dino. But Loom, where other static site generators are highly convention and configuration oriented, Loom really leans into the programming aspect of it. Loom has a lot of well-documented, convenient programming APIs that allow you to alter and extend what Loom does. Sure, there are still configuration files if you want them, but it's much quicker and easier for a programmer to jump into Loom and start really customizing, which I think is very cool. So I've tried each of these static site generators, and I even got pretty deep into Loom when I stopped and thought to myself, wait a second, wouldn't it be great if there was a static site generator written in Dart? Now that's an open question. Why Dart? Does it make sense to worry about bringing that to Dart? Well, I think every ecosystem deserves its own static site generator. We all know the Dart programming language. We know the Dart build system. And very importantly, we're familiar with many packages on Pub and how to use them. We should be able to use that knowledge to generate static websites. So I'm happy to announce that the Flutter Bounty Hunters has created and published Static Shock, a static site generator written in Dart, heavily inspired by Loom, meaning giving you a lot of programmer level control, and with a guide that shows you how to easily and automatically build and deploy your Static Shock website using GitHub Pages. Now, Static Shock is a static site generator that is meant for all static websites. Any static website that you want to generate, we want to help you generate. But there's a mission within the mission that I'd like to focus on if we can. At the Flutter Bounty Hunters, we've built and we maintain a dozen or more open source packages. We also use many other open source packages. And we believe that our ecosystem is greatly lacking documentation websites for packages. We believe that every package, no matter how big, no matter how small, deserves a beautiful and effective documentation website. So this is an area that we are really trying to focus with Static Shock. That said, I'd like to show you what it looks like to generate a documentation website with Static Shock. I'd like to show you what you get out of the box with Static Shock in the hopes that all of you out there who build open source packages will take just a few moments the next time you work on your package to generate a documentation website, set up automatic deployments, and then your users will always have a great place to learn how to use your package. So let's go have a look. Let's take a quick look at what it means to generate a documentation website with Static Shock. First, let me prove to you that we're in an empty directory. There's nothing here currently. 
I already have the Static Shock CLI tool activated globally. It comes from Pub. You just do Dart Pub Global Activate Static Shock CLI. We already have that ready to go. We're now going to run the command to generate a documentation website. So we're going to say shock template docs. This is now going to ask us a series of questions that we're going to answer. The first is the project name. This isn't the package we're documenting. This is the project we're creating. We're going to call, let's, let's pretend that we're creating the documentation for super editor. We'll call this super editor docs. This is the documentation for super editor. Now, the name of the package we are actually documenting, that's going to be super editor. Human readable title is super editor. Description of the documented package, a document editing toolkit for Flutter. Is the documented package published to pub? Yes, it is. What's the GitHub URL? I'm, I'm going to remember this off the top of my head, though most of you will probably just copy and paste. What's the organization? On GitHub, what's the name of the repo on GitHub? Discord URL, we're going to skip that for now. Sponsorship URL, in our case, we're going to send people to flutterbountyhunters.com. All right, and now we've answered all the questions, and now a bunch of stuff is happening. This is the website being generated. It runs pub git. It then automatically runs a build. Now, if we look at the files, look at all the stuff that's here. And by the way, do you notice anything about these files? This is just a Dart project. We generated a Dart project, and this Dart project can then generate static sites. There's a bin where the, the Dart code lives. We have a pub spec. These files that were just generated without touching, we're not going to touch anything else. We All we did was generate them. We're now going to say shock serve, which is going to start a local web server, and that web server is going to serve our documentation website. So it says go to localhost 4001. So here's a browser. Let's go to localhost 4001. Here's our website. This is what we just generated. Now, if you don't like dark mode, you can come over here and go to light mode. That's You can have whatever you want. It's toggleable. But let's stick with dark mode for the high contrast. Everything here was generated. None of this existed before I started talking to you. So let's quickly take a look around at what we have. Notice that the title up here says Super Editor. How did it know? It's because we answered the question at the command line. If we tap on GitHub, we are now at the GitHub repository for Super Editor because we told it where to find that. If we click on Sponsor, we're now at the Flutter Bounty Hunters website because we told the command line where to send sponsorships. If we tap on API Docs, we're now at the official pub.dev API documentation for Super Editor because Static Shock knows how to take your package name and convert it into a URL for PubDev. All of this content is included in the default template, so you can quickly get started altering content instead of needing to figure out where to create it. I would like to point out that over here on the right, we have a table of contents. The table of contents is automatically generated for every page by scraping the different levels of headers of your content. And also something that I think is really cool, notice these contributors right here. Contributors with GitHub avatars. Where did that information come from? Well, when we did the initial build of our website, Static Shock actually went out to GitHub and requested the list of all contributors to our repository. We then show the first four contributors as well as the number of additional contributors that are not shown. You can show all the contributors if you want, but some packages have hundreds of contributors, and that obviously wouldn't fit right here. But the point is, these are the actual contributors to Super Editor in the order of most to least contributions, and you can show any number of them that you'd like. Whatever your package is, you will also get this list of contributors. Again, all of this is available right out of the box. It doesn't take any more than what you saw me do. Now let's stop serving for a moment, and let's open this up in Android Studio. It doesn't have to be Android Studio, that's just my choice. Over here you see all of the files. This source directory includes all of the inputs. We said inputs, transformations, outputs. Source control has all the inputs, the build directory has all the outputs, and the Dart code here under bin is what does the transformation. Here again, we can open a terminal and we can say shock 
serve. Let's bring back the web server because I want to show you what it looks like to make a few little edits. Let's come back here. We'll refresh our page. Okay, here we are in the welcome screen. Let's go find that under index.markdown. Here's our welcome page in content form. The title is welcome. Let's change that to new title. Let's save that. Watch our web page auto refresh. There's our new title. Takes a few seconds to rebuild, but there's the new title. We can also change the content. New mission. Save. Watch this text right here. New mission. And our table of contents updated as well. That's how easy it is once you've generated this template to go in and start altering all of the existing text to document your package. And you have all the things that Markdown brings. You can have code blocks and all of that, links, whatever you need. This tool is designed to help you quickly and effectively document your packages. And I hope that all of you out there with open source packages will give Static Shock a try for that purpose. I hope you enjoyed that brief introduction to using Static Shock for building documentation websites. Again, Static Shock is for all static websites. If you have a static website, a blog, an educational website, a documentation website, go give Static Shock a try and let us know where we can improve. As we close out today, I'd like to say just a few words about the Flutter Bounty Hunters. Static Shock is a project created by my team at the Flutter Bounty Hunters. We also have created and we maintain over a dozen open source packages. The goal of the Flutter Bounty Hunters is to solve problems in the open that many companies keep paying to solve in private. These are problems that don't necessarily help any particular business. They're just chores. They're annoying areas of complexity and cost that every company or many companies seem to accumulate. For example, Super Editor is a document editing toolkit for Flutter. This was a solution that was lacking in the earlier days of Flutter, but we found that companies like Superlist, Clearful, Reflection, and Bringing Fire, different companies building different tools, they all needed great document editing or rich text editing. So all of those companies came together and helped to fund the Flutter bounty hunters to create Super Editor, which is an, a free and open source package, and now the entire Flutter community has a great document editing toolkit available to them. This pattern plays out with any number of problems. So if your company has been or is about to spend precious time and money on a problem that isn't particularly relevant to your business, we would like to solve that for you in the open so that we can solve it for the last time. If that's of interest to you or your team, please do check out flutterbountyhunters.com and reach out to us. With that, I appreciate you taking the time to listen and watch today, and I hope you enjoy Static Shock.